Welcome back to Miller's Construction. A little bit of a unique project on this episode. This is my house and this is my garage. My garage is a 28 by 30, 28 foot deep, 30 foot wide. Let me just pan around so you can see what my garage looks like. This is the center of the garage. It's 28 foot, that's the center. I have a stud over here that this receptacle is attached to, and I have a stud right here. You can see where I've um, mounted something previously. That's the center of this garage on the outside wall. I want to put a ductless head right up there, and I'm thinking about chopping out that one section of drywall, taking out that insulation. Because I bought a 115 volt Mitsubishi unit, I'm going to tie into this circuit. You're not gonna approve of that. Mitsubishi's not gonna like that. They want a dedicated circuit, all that, blah, blah, blah. Listen, here's the deal. I've got that receptacle and that receptacle on that one circuit. I have two receptacles on one circuit that I never use. I've got an extension cord and this small battery maintainer hooked up to it right now. Those are running two maintainers, battery maintainers. That's it. I never use that receptacle. I'm not worried about it. Uh, this Mitsubishi, it's a 17 sear, I believe. It doesn't pull that much anyway, so I'm tying in. I'm gonna tap into that circuit. That's gonna be easy money for me. Right there's my wire, I, I can tap in. Um, so, ductless head up top, and then we come out here, and I'll put the exterior unit. Now, this is what's really nice. The Mitsubishi units, um, the line set, and the controls, the power, all that's on the right side of the unit. So the right side of the unit will sit right here. All I have to do is extend this concrete pad out just a little bit, and that's what I'm fixing to get going with. I've got 18 bags of concrete. Don't know if I'll need all them. I think it figured for 16, but I wanted a few extra. Um, but that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna mix up some concrete. I'm gonna get this all formed up, pour that, and then we'll just take you through it. Hopefully step-by-step step on this whole process. Sit back, enjoy Miller's construction. Let's get to work. Got my big fan blowing on me, nice and comfortable. It is really hot today, it's supposed to get up to 100 degrees. So that's no cool, no cool, no cool. All right, I'm not too worried about all this being perfect. The only person that's ever gonna notice is me. We want this 0.8 degrees high on the right side, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, somewhere in there. There we go, there we go. Man, I like that. I'm liking the way that's looking. All right, I wonder how we look over here. Oh man, well, I can't complain about that. I cannot complain about that. Money. Beautiful. Formed up, ready to pour some concrete. Now the fun begins. Uh, you can see what we've got going on here. I've just got two holes dug. We've done several mini splits this way, by the way, we never have an issue. Uh, in my part of the country, the frost depth's like 10 inches. Um, we just don't have an issue with heave, really. So not that big of a deal. And there's just no weight on those mini splits. They're, they're pretty lightweight. So just got her formed up. And now the fun part begins. I've got to get that concrete mixer off there and I've got 18 bags of concrete. I think it's gonna take at least 16 to do this. So thank goodness for the fan. Let's get her going. Concrete has been poured and it's been a few days. So it's setting up nicely and I like the way it turned out. So in here, I've removed these shelves, moved this rod down and you can see I've had to remove three brackets 
This is the section of drywall I'm gonna to have to cut out right here. All right, got the depth set to about a half inch. Let's see how it works. Cross your fingers. So right here is the exact reason I could not run that router against the stud and ride the stud to cut that drywall out. That is chicken wire. This is damp sprayed cellulose, not dense pack cellulose. We had to put chicken wire over the damp sprayed cellulose to keep it from falling out because the cavity is a full eight inches deep, 24 inch on center framing. All right, drum roll please. This is for Joel McIntosh, by the way. Mr. Insulation himself. And Nathan, Nathan Shirai. What do we have here? What do we have here? Do we have any wet, rotten sheeting or boards? Man, look how deep that is. Ooh, that's deep. Dry, 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 dry. Full eight inch cavity with damp sprayed cellulose. And ain't a bit of it damp. And there's the back side of my zip. No rot. I'll get the camera down here here in a second. Kind of show you what it looks like. A little up close and personal. If you're not familiar with damp sprayed cellulose, this is it. It's nice and dry. You have to understand how this stuff works. You have to let it completely dry before you cover it up with drywall. We run fans, dehumidifiers, and you can see after five years, this zip sheeting is rock solid, no dampness about it, uh, no rot, and let's see, where's my, there it is, tape measure. We're right at a full eight inches, very, very close to a full eight inches. You can see where I had to put a furring strip out that made this wall the same depth as the blocks down here below. So that's a full eight inch deep cavity of damp sprayed cellulose and everything is perfectly intact. Now I can go outside and install my diamond coat rigid mount, my horizontal rigid mount, which is beautiful. Thank you Wausau Supply for sending that out.
kind of an update of what I've got going on here. I forgot to turn on the camera. I know that happens to a lot of folks. You just get busy. You start working on this stuff and you don't even think about it. So basically what I've done is I've created a box. This box, um, I've used this on the rest of my house, the other two mini splits, and it works very well. Uh, basically what's going to happen here is I can make my connections, um, or actually Aaron Owens can make his connections, Owens Power Plus, or Owens, Owens Power and Air, excuse me. He can make his connections to his line sets and uh, the drain, we're gonna use three quarter pecs. I've got a way that we're gonna use that. Um, the diameter is, is just about right. But anyways, this insulation, I took some that fell out and I stuffed it back here before I screwed this backing board on. Now, once I get approval from him, I'm waiting to hear back from him to make sure this is good, and I think it will be. I'm gonna spray foam all of this, all of these cracks to air seal that. And this will just be an empty void behind the mini split. It works out very well doing it this way. You can see I've got my line sets kind of tied together with some zip ties. Got that PEX running out. Stick it down in there behind there. All that sealed up best you can. All right, so I saved all of that damp sprayed cellulose and packed it back in there as good as I could after the spray foam set up. And then up here, you can see that spray foam swelling out. I have to cut out a little bit of it. But we are basically ready for drywall. We're ready to put drywall back. I did go ahead and clamp my PEX drain line nice and tight to that stud. So hopefully I won't have an issue there. Um, this is tacked decent enough. I don't think I'll have a problem. But yeah, time for some drywall. All right, just about ready to tape these butt joints. But... That's got me looking pretty good. I did a little pre-fill here where I'd routed that out. So wait for that to dry. I went ahead and cut out where the seam was. I just, I feel better about doing it that way. So I have to re-mud that. I already have to mud, you know, these butts anyways. So what difference does it make? We've got our condenser setting. We're gonna keep the condenser bumped out a little bit because we want airflow behind it. The manufacturer recommends it, and I don't want leaves piling up behind here. And if, if there are leaves that pile up behind here, I want to be able to blow them out. And if I ever have a problem with this, and Aaron needs to come back and service it, he's going to have plenty of room here um, to make that happen. So here we go. We're going we're gonna to start the install. What are we going here, Aaron? How, how far are we going out? We're going to shoot for... 17 inches 17 inches away from the wall is what aaron likes and i like the way that looks so now, as yeah. far as the what the um, manufacturer's recommendations or what they call for is at least four inches or, or greater but that's too tight that's just too tight in my opinion yeah, so it's good for like an urban area where you have tight areas yeah uh, but we have plenty of room here so. okay <laughs> and so this is part of the reason that i've got aaron installing this thing um, he's installed tons of these units and I would just rather pay him to do this part of it. Um, just makes my life easier, and I know that it's done right at the end of the day. So, anyways, yeah, we're gonna get to, we're gonna get this baby installed. I've got some nice bolts here to bolt it down. Some of these wedge bolts, not wedge anchors, wedge bolts. And we'll be using the new Flex Mid Torque to fasten those things down and to drill the holes. Yet another flex tool. 
flex rotor hammer. Well, let's get going. That's good right there. All right, so we got the flex rotary hammer. This thing's a beast. So I've got a very small bit in here to pilot these. Because I want a little bit more accuracy. You know what? I'm going to turn it to the drill mode first. I'm not even going to put any punches on it. We're just going to try to drill a little, little hole here. Or get, get it started anyways. seal has this spin spin flare which I'm not gonna say it's the best like the best tool to use right but it's a cheap version mm -hmm. of a better tool than that block style now they make a 700 800 dollar kit that'll right. do an auto right. flare you got to be nice. doing you got to be doing a lot of mini split installs to pay for that yeah, yeah. so anyway we're gonna use this yeah this show us flare. how this thing works man yeah. I've never seen this before so we're gonna use quarter inch Quarter inch. We're gonna use half inch. Or no, three eighths. Three eighths. So yeah. three eighths. Yeah, because that's the that's the size of the line sets, right, Aaron? Yep. So the, I went by. I, I I bought this thing on E Comfort, and that's one thing I love about E Comfort. They told me the size line set that I needed, and I've screwed up before, as Aaron knows, and ordered the wrong size line set because I didn't follow their instructions. So one of the nice things about sticking with E Comfort. Um, they tell you the line set to use. Okay, so you got some emery cloth. So the since the line set's been exposed to weather a little bit, you had it sealed off at the flares with these weather caps, which is good. So the inside's clean. But since it's been sitting here waiting for me for a little bit, uh, the line set's oxidized a bit. And so, I mean, I could just leave it. It probably wouldn't make a big difference, but I'm gonna clean them up a little bit just to have nice clean copper. I like to just make sure we have a nice clean connection all the way around. Yeah. And it just looks better, right? Yeah. I mean, it'll oxidize soon enough, too. I yeah. mean, it's not yeah. going to stay clean, but yeah. it'll um, help you with your flare. Yeah, it'll just keep that from getting behind the nut sure. so much. Yeah. And we don't want any debris or contaminants now the, interfering with our seal. Now the one thing to know, too, is when you do sand it like this, or I also have another tool where you can clean that that rib, which we're going to use this to do that. Okay. You always want to keep the line set pointed down. Okay. Because if any of that gets in the line. Shavings. The shavings, dust, mm -hmm. it's going to have to be caught by the, the line filter dryer, the line filter dryer. Gotcha. And uh, you want to catch as little <laughs> that material makes sense. as possible so that we have good flow. That makes time, sense. So. So this tool does clean that little rib, which that rib is important to get knocked down a little bit because when you do the flare, it'll actually create like a ridge. Instead of having a smooth uh, metal flare, it'll have like a ridge that'll create a gap between the nut. Mm -hmm. These small lines are easy to work with, but they're a little bit harder to... Gotcha. Um, this is going to be the 3 8 uh, so Basically, it's... Uh, a spin flare so as that as that pipe goes over this it's gonna start flaring at this little ridge right here so I don't know if you can see that so this is going to insert into the pipe this is the actual 3 8 diameter and as it 
makes it to the ridge, it'll start flaring that out. Okay. Well, the trick to using this is to keep your hand away from it because it gets hot. <laughs> okay, interesting. And two, um, just going nice and steady and straight. Otherwise, okay. you, can, you can actually bend the flare. So, we'll just we demonstrate go. this. With the insulation on there, it's hard to hard to grip it. Yeah. So there's oh, your flare. Man. As long wow. as that goes over nice and easy. Okay, how much does that kit cost right there, Aaron? <laughs> I believe that one is somewhere close to $150. Man, so. that's... But you've got a pretty nice flare there. <laughs> it's better than trying to hold that block. Yes, Make sure it yes. sticks out just far enough. 100%. And then trying to get yeah. that on there. It's yeah. 100%. Nice. Okay. So this is just like a, a flexible metal conduit. Okay. With a PVC coating, and so it's liquid tight. Okay. Um, the thing I like about it is it carries the ground. So we will use a ground wire that'll go from the lug to to the uh, unit's grounding point here. But metal conduit will continue the bond from here to here as well so that this, this is like a secondary ground it's, i just like it a lot nice. more. nice it's also just more durable okay uh the, the seal tight or liquid tight that does not have the metal mm -hmm. it's just a flexible pv mm -hmm. plastic uh -huh. conduit it's just it doesn't flex as good okay, okay. Uh, it's got the plastic fittings okay uh it's just not as durable yeah and so this is last and looks a lot better for very a long nice time, so I love the way it looks. And just to clarify, the orange cable, that is our, basically our control wires and our power wires that communicate between the condenser and the head, correct? Yeah. And then our yellow wire here, that's actually powering the exterior unit, right? Correct. It's doing the bulk of the work, in other words. Yeah, so you're still gonna carry 120 volts to the head. Right. Uh, which will be carried in the orange. But that's um, really right. only controlling the computer module and the blower fan, right? right? Okay. And so this single wire that you have, that fourth wire, right? Uh, that'll actually, I'm not exactly sure exactly how it works, but it sends the signal okay. uh, to, to operate a certain way. Okay. The other wires will just give the power to the head. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So, All right. So there's always got to be a, a control wire that basically says, you know, to operate a certain yeah. way. Communications. So, yeah, okay. Communication. So with these fittings, if anybody's interested in knowing, so it's nice metal fitting. When you take this off, you'll have several components. You have the lock collar, you'll have a plastic ring, and then you'll have the insert, which screws into the inside of the conduit. And this presses and goes behind that, that lip. So it locks in. So as this tightens down, it tightens all that together. Very nice. A nice tight fit. It's a little bit difficult to push through bends and turns. Right. So the straighter and the stout, the uh, more taut that you hold in, mm -hmm. the smoother it slides in. Okay. Nice and easy. Oh, look at that. Doing things left-handed is always... Yeah. There the nice thing about these units that I'm really like, um, LG's got a decent um, bracket system too at times, but on these smaller units, I do like the fact that Mitsubishi has this bracket that you can mount to that's separate from the head. Yeah. So LG likes to make theirs where they this comes off and then you have to mount to it. Okay. You have to make all your connections and push it all in. Oh. So I do like this that you can just come right up and the cover covers all the wires so they're not exposed. Nice. But it's much easier to work. Yeah. On, so. so you're not having to smush all that in there, right? Yeah. And it's just 
you can see it before you you don't have to mess with the wires to take the camera off. Right, right. Nice. Noting, I mean, I think everybody that's ever worked with wires knows that you just twist them to keep them from fraying up. Mm -hmm. I don't like to just stick it in there right. once it's stripped. The old timers used to take the time and, and actually heat up the wire and uh, tin it. Tin it, yeah. This is just simply a on-off switch basically. It just allows you quick access to killing the power. There's no fuses or yep. non-fused disconnect, I believe is the box terminology, correct? Yeah. $12 at Lowe's. Pick that dude up. That's one thing about eComfort. Um, some of their stuff, the, their accessories are a little overpriced at times. Yeah. Uh, I think they wanted $20 for that disconnect. I just went, I was already in Lowe's, so I picked one up for 12. You know, and it's an Eaton brand, which is a pretty good brand in my opinion. Yeah, I like Eaton. Making one connection for one side and making the connection for the other side. It's just basically a piece of copper that makes a U shape. And so by using the line in the center, load on the outside edge, we're just going to use this half for 120. And actually, I've got to put this on first. Plastic ones, you know, snap on, you know, awesome to, to work in. It's just a safety. 90% of the time, you'll never use it. Yeah. As long as that makes a good connection. Yep. Good. Beautiful. Your lid. But if you have a problem out here, it's nice to have a... Yeah, disconnect real quick, quick and easy. So Aaron was just putting on some of this Nylog Blue Gasket Thread Sealant. Now we've just got the tall task of hooking everything up underneath the mini split in this beautiful wall cavity I've created. Yeah, not a lot of room, is there? All right, so we've got our flared fittings connected, ready to rock and roll. Before we hook up the drain or wires or anything extra, we are going to try to simulate that Freon being in there in those line sets by pressurizing it with what? With what? nitrogen. Nitrogen, okay, we're gonna pressurize it with nitrogen and now that's gonna put pressure on the system, right? So nitrogen is a very dry, um, very stable gas. Okay. And so we're not going to introduce any moisture to the system because of it. And didn't you tell me that that's what they typically test the heads with? Yeah. Is nitrogen at the factory? Yeah, they'll usually send it with the nitrogen charge. Yeah. Okay. Being a very small system, and we're only charging from here, so it's testing from here to the head and back at this point and we're not chart doing anything with this this has refrigerant in it yep um so being a, that it's a very small system it didn't take a whole lot to get there so i actually like to take it to 300 psi or a little bit more that's what this is set for even though it's one gauge is off <laughs> gotcha 
So what are you spraying on there, Aaron? So this is bubble soap. Bubble soap. This is a uh, Diversitech Pro Bubble. <laughs> Diversitech Pro Bubble. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's even though we're, we're our lines are pressurized, we're and, and it's holding on your gauges, we still want to test those uh, those flares, right? Yeah. That's the purpose. So, so far, I'm seeing just a very slow um, change in pressure. It's not very much. Okay. Not very fast. Okay. If it was much of a leak, it would be going really quick. Yeah. Sometimes that can happen just from the fluctuation of the air around the line. Temperature and all that, yeah. Okay. However, I just want to make sure we're good. Sure, okay. sure. Okay. So we got our drain hooked up, we got our line sets hooked up. Aaron is now going to wire the head. And out here, we're still pressure testing. Head is wired up. We come out here. We're running a vacuum on it, pulling all the moisture out. And finally, after quite a while, pumping that nitrogen, pressurizing it, it came to um, a very comfortable stop. It stopped leaking, so we, we feel really good about it now. So we're going to pump this down, though. And uh, hopefully before too long, we'll have some cool air. So what are we doing now? So we're getting ready to open up the valves um, in order to let the refrigerant flow into the okay. head. Okay. So the, the unit, condensing unit's always pre-charged. Right. With the refrigerant you need for the system. So. Nothing impressive because there's not a ton in there. So. Well, you can hear it though. Yes, yeah, so all right. Should be a little, yeah, about just under 200 psi, or a little over maybe. Yeah, about 205, 206, 207. Okay. So nice. we're fully, fully open. And so we're going to lock this down. Really, there's no sense of worrying about the pressure. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Very nice. Um, because what I don't want to do is. Put too much refrigerant into my my hoses. Sure. And lose it from the system. So. Sure. These are called thumb screws. Thumb screws, yeah. Yeah, but you never want to just make them thumb tight. Ah. You want to lock them down good because if those seals, there's just an O-ring in these, and if those seals ever fail, right, and those aren't tight, you'll lose all. You'll lose all your freon. Okay. And then this one, you want it snug too. Okay. So that Schrader valve ever fails. You'll You've got a backup. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. It's that time. Garage ductless. Here we go. I heard it beep. Well, we're blowing cold air. And it is cooling down in here. My goodness, look at that, look at that. That's a beautiful sight right there. So it is absolutely exchanging the air, dumping that hot air out here. And we're dumping all of that condensation out with it, all of that humidity. You can see I've got some condensation flowing that way, I don't care. I think it's beautiful. I think it looks great. It started raining today, so we put the canopy up. I'm just so pleased, super pleased with the way it looks. Um, love that we set the condenser out that far so that during the fall, I can get my leaf blower back here. Um, if we ever have an issue with the unit, Aaron can come back and service the unit with plenty of room right here. I need to pull my forms, uh, but yeah, I just, I'm very happy. All right, we're done with the install. It looks awesome. I got this thing centered up pretty nice. It is cooling down in here really fast. It feels awesome. Thanks, Aaron, for coming down. Um, we ran into a couple of challenges. We thought we had a leaky head. We didn't. Um, 
at least not that we know of now. We, we hope not. We're crossing our fingers. That could always still be a potential. But it did pass the test, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think part of it, I put an old hose on that gave us a little false reading. So that was that was our first thing. We, we had an old hose, and it was really leaking pretty good there. It was going down like 0.1 every 30 seconds or so. Yeah. And so once we eliminated that hose and put a different hose on it, it that, that really slowed down. And about the time that we did that, it started raining. So yeah. the temperature outside started decreasing. And so I think that also gave us a little bit of a false reading. So between all that, that but eventually it concluded that we were holding pressure. Yeah. And then when we did a vacuum test, uh, yeah. it also did well. It, 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 yeah, how many microns? It got down really low. So it got to like 140 microns. So, okay, so yeah. really well for a small system, right? right. Oh yeah. From my understanding. Great. So anyways, um, this is something that, you know, we kind of partnered in sharing with this this video. I did a little bit of the work. Aaron did most of the smart person work. Um, I just ran the line sets and got all the all the pretty stuff done. Uh, but Aaron Aaron did the technical stuff, so I appreciate him. If you're not subscribed to his channel and you want to see more in depth on mini split installations, air sealing, electrical, all of those mechanicals, right? Yep. Subscribe to his channel. It's Owens Power and Air. Owens Power and Air. So um, check him out. Really appreciate it. Like and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any suggestions. I highly recommend putting the line sets in the wall. I don't like the scoops on the outside. No doubt it would have been easier to hook up. Yeah, there's always the uh, convenience factor out of those other short right. shortcuts. But as I said, anything that's worthwhile takes a little bit extra work. So. Yeah, so we, we could have we drilled a, a four inch hole straight to the wall, <laughs> bent the line sets down and been done with it, right? Yeah. Uh, but we would have had that ugly line set coming down my beautiful diamond coat siding. I didn't want that. Now it looks like I built the house with this already in mind, but this was actually retrofitted. So really, really happy about that. And like I said, I wish we had a thermostat out here or, or, or a thermometer where we could see how quickly it's cooling down because, man, this thing is rocking and rolling. So anyways, really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.